On the 6th of September 2018, the Department of Conservation airily spread 1080 poison bait across the Marpra Wildlife Reserve. The reserve is about 20 minutes drive southeast of Tikawiti. So how, how did you end up hearing about this? Oh, I just, um, it was a friend actually, um, he just uh, Facebooked me, it seems to be the way everyone gets in touch with everyone these days. And, yeah, just a mate just, that works next door said that there was a heap of dead cows in the paddock and so I went and sussed it out and had a look and there was a, uh, yeah, 1080 sign, so. This, is, this happened a week ago already and we are no further, or not, we're not closer no. to having any answers. No. A week has gone by. No. And we are still no. in the dark. What worries me is that because we've got no knowledge of what this 1080 is, is uh, it, how it decomposes, you know, what happens to it. I don't want the animals on my land. I don't really want them buried here. Um, I don't want, I would rather, even if it's going to be an expensive operation, and I'm sorry to have to ask you, but I'd rather you helicoptered them off and dump them somewhere else. Get rid of them off of this farm. I don't want them on the farm. Because I really don't understand about the 1080. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is our land for goodness sake. Yeah. So I'm the lawyer. I was asked to assist Mark and Paula Stone, who live in Otrahunga, um, following the death of eight of their cows and the um, abortion of two calves after a dock run 1080 drop on their property. The situation is extremely distressful and for everybody obviously because they relied on the Department of Conservation and the information they were given that this was not going to cause any problems for their farm, it would be well managed and there would be no risk for their cattle or anything else. As it turned out that was wrong. They were not given any warning information about the um, MPI, the food safety consequences of having poison on their pastures or in their cows and they stand to lose a considerable amount of value from their farm if they cannot use the pastures that have now been contaminated. This is the boundary of my property, but again, on the left where the pine trees are, that was all had 1080 dropped on it with the helicopter. The toxic baits were eerily spread across rolling and easily accessible forestry and bush country with just a 50 metre buffer between baits and pasture. This is a block of bush, it's like uh, four and a half hectares big, but then below the bush is an open paddock, which we use all the time as part of our, part of our, our, our grazing block. Can stock wander into this bush? They can, yes. they can walk into this bush, yes. but I usually find them in here, in the middle of winter when it's freezing cold, or in the summertime when it's really, really hot, they will go in there. Was that? Yes. Do you think that area there, that little block there, had was eerily poisoned? Yes. Yes, it was. Yes, yes, it was. This block here of bush is where it's had the 1080 on it, <laughs> and just beyond, on our our right, your left, is our house where we live. And I'm, and I, I would imagine you're probably looking at about 100, 130, 140 meters from our house to the bush, where they've dropped this 1080. The baits were eerily spread to within 200 metres of the Stones' home, and the toxic cereal baits were also found on areas the Stones used for grazing their stock. Eight dead cows were found in the paddock they had been moved to for their protection just days earlier. It was only days before they um, was uh, going to ahead with the operation that they decided not to do the top bush, and they didn't. Nobody really rang us and said we're not doing your top bush no. or that area. No. It was a neighbour who said, "Well, you realise why that was? It was because there is concerns that the water from the top bush actually does feed, um, you know, into the water troughs, and it's stock water and it, it's household." Uh, water uh, so that's why they they've not done the, the top bush nobody rang and said we're not doing it they just told us two days before they decided not to do it to remove our animals and if they had a rang us our animals would still be up in that area and they would be relatively safe compared to the fact that we've moved them to an area nearer to where they were doing because we're at we were out of choices where do we put them because you can see we're surrounded by bush aren't we really
So we did the right thing and we moved them, well we thought we were, and we moved them there. So what happened, the cows were put in a paddock that Doc said that they should be put in where they'd be safe for the poison operation. Doc were in charge of the security of the fences, making sure everything was safe. Doc approved that, they went ahead and did the poisoning. Doc now say that that fencing wasn't suitable and that the cows somehow got through a gate. Now what we don't know is whether the cows did go through the gate into the block that was poisoned and then went back into the original block where they'd been and died in the original block or where the poison baits were also dropped in the second block and were eaten by the cows in that block and they then died in that block. So that's a question that's still being investigated. So what have you got? <laughs> there it is, look. Yes. It's, um, yeah, oh, poison. Yeah. yeah, I was walking along chatting and I just noticed it. Yeah, it's just absolutely... Ridiculous, isn't it? It's, I don't it's, care whether it's one piece or whether it's 20 pieces, no, it should not. There's a lot more down It's here. in the yeah. paddock, yes. It's not in the bush. And we were told well, it's that, bush only. only. We only do so. the bush. So right below by my feet is that piece of 1080 poison we just showed, showed you. And there is a water top where the cattle drink from. That would be five, maybe six metres. It's quite so indent. It's cattle have squashed it, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Starting to <coughs> break down because there's quite a few heavy heavy tubes and it's just starting to break down. Yeah. Yeah. Where's another one there? Another one Can you move there. that one for me? Just five or six within well within ten square meters. Yeah. And then there's another one right here. Yeah. Those, those three pieces. Another there. one. There. Another one just right here. So what do they say about the tennis court? For the size of a tennis court. Uh, well, they, they always vary. This could be like a um, trickle feed. Another one here. Yep. It can be a trickle feed, so oh, okay. like a, a line. Right. Oh, okay. It could be. I see that at the start of the road, there's signs saying um, security cameras right back, you know. Oh, oh that's, that's, uh, that's, that's from, our, from that guy who lives at the beginning of the road. Yeah. Um, yeah. Curry. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think there's been a, a few things that have been happening or going missing yeah so he's just maybe so does he actually um run those i believe that i believe so i'd be worth but he certainly used to when i used to work for him yeah so that you know yeah i think be... there's one of those that just sort of um trail camp if you if something passes it, it yep. will it will activate it, like you know or yeah. So we've been here five years and we've not had any problems with rats and possums. But you take what the ministry say, you take their advice. This is what you need to do to stop disease on your property and to protect the kukaku. But you know, I just now I feel like an absolute fool for listening to that. Um and shocked that they've chosen an area um, to put this poison in that leads into open paddocks as close as this is just bizarre. They should be advising us. They should be saying, surely we shan't put it in this little patch here. And when I say little patch, it is a little patch. You can walk it from the top to the bottom in less than 15 minutes. It's not great dense forestry. So why have they put it here? They're supposed to be the ones that are advising us and protecting us and being honest. And I don't feel that that has happened now. So I feel very, very, very sad about the whole situation and awful that I didn't ask them more questions before they started their operation. The families say they felt very pressured from Doc because they felt that they were almost being bullied into agreeing that if they didn't agree to poison being on their land, they'd be letting down the whole Kokako protection program. Now what's come out since is that that area could easily have been trapped. There was absolutely no need for 1080 poison to be used at all, let alone aerially in such a small area. I mean, it's ridiculous. So it's just a shame that the thinking wasn't done by Doc before they started putting pressure on people. And more here too. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know the interesting thing? We've not come across one dead possum. We've not come across one dead rat. And this was done last Thursday. So it hasn't been very effective. The only thing that it's done is killed our stock. So can you tell me when the aerial drop was and when did um, the Department of Conservation people reportedly come through here? Right, so the, the aerial drop was on the Thursday and then we came down 
on the Sunday. So then we saw the, the dead cattle. So we rang the, uh, the ministry, P MPI people, who then got a hold of Department of Conservation on Monday morning. And then they got a hold of us, Department of Conservation rang us, and we all met down here with a vet. And when they left, they, they didn't call in at the house. They walked all the way back here. So they walked all the way up to what, where we've just come from and all the way back. And they left the property with no mention um, to us. Um, reception is difficult here. When we got home, Thomas rang and he said, now you did remove all the cattle from that paddock, didn't you? He said, I've not seen any more dead animals all the way. And we said, oh, that's great, Thomas. That's good. Because we weren't sure at that point if there were still two missing. That's great. And we said, yes, we've definitely moved them from the paddock. Yes, don't let them back into that paddock. And Mark, we do understand that you might be short of feed here. So we are willing to, uh, if you can source some silage, what we would like to do for you is we will pay for that. But don't let them back into that paddock. But there was no mention because we've just seen what we've just seen, all this 1080 in here. There was no mention of that. When you first identified the dead animals, were, the, were the, all the cattle still in the same field? Yes. Yes, that's correct, they yes. They yes. were all in the same paddock and um, we were just, we were alarmed at the amount that had died so suddenly. It just seemed, you know, that they'd all died at the same time, very suddenly. Um, and the other animals were looking very, um, as they do when they see death, they were looking quite stressed. Um, so we took the advice of, um, of the uh, doc um, to remove the animals, the, the healthy, the ones that hadn't died immediately, and do not put them back in this paddock. So the cattle we found dead, and the live ones were in this paddock below us here, and they were not, nothing was dead or alive in the bush, they were all in the paddock below us. There's been problems all over New Zealand with stock being killed by 1080 operations. In the past, most of them have been the subject of secret settlements where DOC have paid some money and the, um, and the problem has never been publicly discussed. However, people are tired of that happening and people are starting to speak to each other and say, this is not okay. Here is a food safety risk that potentially is very serious for New Zealand's economy and for the people who eat the food and for the rest of the food chain. We need a conversation about this. We need to resolve it. We need to stop. Doc flew back over late Thursday afternoon. So, yeah, no, no problems. Cattle where they should be yes. and everything's fine. We came down on the Sunday to move animals ourselves. Yes. And as I looked over the fence by the house, looked down, I said, Paul, hang on a minute, Paul, I, I, I can see a yes. dead body down we the bottom, a totally dead cow. Yeah. So I went in, got my binoculars. Yes, sure enough, I could see, oh, one, two dead cattle down yes. from below the house. So then we got in the car because we were going home, had a quick drive up the Mopra South Road, and we could see more dead cattle from the road. Yes. And then I got a hold of the uh, MPI lady, Cara, and left a message on her phone. At the moment, the Department of Conservation has taken away samples for testing from the dead cows, from, apparently from two of the cows. The family have taken their own samples and have them safe because actually nobody trusts the Department of Conservation anymore. Have a look here and it looks to me, is that blood coming out of its eyes That's there? That's correct, yes. they all had that. that yeah, they, know, they did all appear to have blood, blood coming out of their eyes and out of their noses, Nose, yeah. yes. yes. Yeah. This has exploded itself. I Nobody's did point this. that Damn. out. Oh, true. That's exploded. The, the nose is covered in, there, in their exploded. eyes. Oh, yeah. okay. They were bleeding yeah. from their eyes. Yeah. I thought that was yeah. really yeah. sad no, to I, see I, that. Okay. Absolutely that, horrible. That's a shocking no. way to go, isn't it? It's and nasty, isn't one? it? So, it's, yeah. I, I've never ever seen... Wow. We've seen bloat, haven't we? And we've seen animal a keel over in the paddock and they blow up. But these look like they... You oh, know, so I've not seen exploded. quite yeah. like that. Yeah, that's the way I no. see it. There was not too much so sign of a gas, gassing, but frothing from the mouth. Yes, we saw that clearly on, on all animals, the white froth. Yeah. Yes. Any blood or any? A little, a little bit of blood at that point. There was lots of eye 
the, I was the alarmed the, at the blood nostrils. in the nostrils coming yeah. out the nostrils and the eyes. Yeah, yeah. weeping. Yeah, yes. I was quite alarmed at the, the and one. I did say that to the vet to Anna. I said, "Look at all the blood on the face," and she said, "Yes, that 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 yes, that's that that can happen with bloat or pastoral um, diseases. Yes, it can. We we will we will test for for those for everything. Yes, yeah." The, the vet that Doc sent started suggesting that perhaps the cows had died from Clostridium. Now Clostridium is the bacteria that causes botulism. I find it very curious that botulism's never been a problem in New Zealand except in two cases that were most likely caused by 1080. One is the Cochiman family case in Pataru and the other one is these eight dead cows. Now I'm not sure if Doc are pursuing that theory any further but for a herd of healthy cows to suddenly have eight drop dead, two fetal abortions and a whole bunch of sick cows cows simultaneously with a 1080 poison drop, I would suspect that the most likely cause is the poison. The Angus that's licking her back in now, she actually slipped her calf two days ago and uh, she should not be, uh, she, they're still four, between four and five weeks away from calving, to start of calving, but she's slipped her calf. Is that common? No, nah. no. It's not. If a cow or if a, if a heifer or a cow is going to slip its calf, it's usually done when it's around that five to six months old, not when it gets to uh, like eight months old. No, it's not, uh, not usual at all. No. We were pleased um, that um, Doc had got hold of us, um, or the Ministry of Primary Industries, um, to let us know that they were going to, or that they were wanting to put this 1080 on our property. Um, we thought that that was very uh, fair, that they come and give us a consultation. I felt the consultation was more of, we are going to do this, um, but we have to inform you. It was very, very brief, and I did actually ask a few questions about the 1080, and I believed that there was su it was such a minute um, dosage, um, it wouldn't really kill um, uh, large animals. That's not what we're targeting. And so that was the only bit of knowledge about the 1080, and the size of it, I really believed, was probably to be, um, you know, to be compared to the size of a, a cornflake. The family were made to feel very guilty if they didn't go along with DOC and, and support the conservation program and on the basis of the information they were told they felt that that, that was a reasonable thing to do to agree. Now that they have more information and they understand the risks they, they would never have agreed and it's a real question about whether there's informed consent or not when you're told some of the information and you're told some misinformation and you're not told what might go wrong. So this is another question that's been raised in this case. But one of the things that does alarm me, I have to say, is the lack of knowledge about 1080. Nobody seemed to, even after, there's no aftercare, there's no helpline. Who do you ring? Where do you get the information wrong from? There's no, um, this is what you do if you find an animal on your pastures. This is um, what we are accountable for. This is what we will be responsible for. Uh, this is what we will do for you. There is none of that. It's all what we are going to do this and we're going to do that. Um, end of story. The Department of Conservation says it's likely eight cows have died from a 1080 drop in the central North Island. However, it won't be known for certain until the return of a toxicology report and says the cows appear to have entered an operational zone. The cattle have forced their way through a fence, uh, through a gate uh, and a fence into the operational area. Um, likely there they consumed some baits. If the cattle, dozens of them, had forced their way into the operational area and consumed 1080 poison baits, then some cattle would most likely have died in the operational area. However, no cattle were found dead or alive in the operational area. Doc says cattle would have to eat 20 of these pellets to die, but until there's a better system, it says it will continue to use 1080. The manufacturer's warning label states that just 30 grams of bait, which equates to just two and a half standard size baits, may kill an adult human. Just two and a half baits. In this research undertaken in America, it states that a lethal dose for Hereford cows is just 0.22 milligrams per kilo of body weight, 
which means Hereford cows are five times more sensitive to 1080 poison than humans. The document also states, This high susceptibility shows the importance of using safe techniques when applying grain baits containing this chemical for rodent control. Around 2 million kilograms of 1080 poison bait is spread by helicopters across New Zealand's forests and waterways every year. Enough poison to kill over 60 million people every year. The factory that imports 1080 poison and manufactures the baits is a state-owned enterprise. The two acting shareholders are the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Primary Industries. Its warning label states, that a lethal dose of bait for an adult human could be as little as 30 grams. That's equivalent to just 2.5 of these 12 gram baits. Animals like deer and pigs can consume many more baits than is required to kill them, making their dead bodies massive toxic baits for any bird, animal or person that eats them. Like you say, you can see the bees are feeding on it, which is really nasty, isn't it? It's horrendous. They're just starting to build their hives at this time yeah, in the spring, right. you know, this is when they start swarming. Yeah, because yeah. Ronnie's talking, he's going to fly 300 metres, Yeah, 250 as he flies through and he's back to the beehive. One would have thought that Doc, as the organisers of the operation, would have gone out and checked if there are any beehives in the vicinity. So here we have yet another risk to our food safety and to our environment and to our pollinators that's just being overlooked in this blindless pursuit. What are these animals worth? Right, well, because they are in calf heifers and very close to the, to the drop, having their first calf, then honestly, I would put $2,000 a head on these calves quite easily. Yeah. They're in calf yeah. to, a, to, a, a, to a nice bull, yeah. and the calves alone are $300 a piece. And how long will you keep that cow for? Well, I would expect to see at least eight, possibly nine, ten calves out of her in her lifetime. Yeah, that's so that's right. a calf a year. Yeah. So I would expect to see her for at least another so nine, really, ten years after today. Realistically, you're looking at maybe twenty thousand dollars for exactly each animal. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Eight are already dead, but the, what worries me is the ones that are alive at the moment. When a bit of stress comes on them, for instance, calving, yeah. are they likely to die? Exactly. We've had this animal for two years as a, as a four-day-old calf. Yeah. So that's another two years of life that's just gone from us as well. Time. See, you cannot time. get that time back. Yeah. We've got to start from scratch again. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just put us backwards so far. Mm. It, it's just unbelievable. Because they've got to be quite deep down into the soil, do they? Well, idea, well, yes, yes, right. How many metres, Tom, in do they need to be or well, down there? Because I, I am worried about kids. Over the top, is okay. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. And that poison cannot seep back up over time, or no, no. no. There's no risk in terms of the yeah. environment from yeah. from these deep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This American 1080 poison warning label states. Dispose of collars and other wastes contaminated by 1080 under three feet of soil at a safe location, preferably on the property owned and managed by the applicator and at least one half mile from human habitations and water supplies. So what's happened here then? Right, so we had a dead animal under where we're st stood now, underneath, and rather than taking her out of this drain where there's a spring of water going into the stream they've just pushed dirt on top of her and left it here uh, you tell me if that's okay I don't think it is because like I say this spring with this water so any toxins that are in this animal when it starts to break down I'm going to go straight down here and straight down into the Mangapihai stream but Doc seems to think that's okay I don't. It's quite, it's quite difficult for a helicopter to do little intricate boundaries. Yes. So try and make it as, as, as easy for them to fly as possible. So, um, 
you know, so, so, there's, so there's no, um, so I, I guess, chance of a flying yeah. outside of the boundary and things like that. So, so yeah, I, I that was the understanding that we yeah. had for you guys. Okay. That, that so for that, to enable the bush to get done, that, that those grazing yes. areas would be clear yeah. of stock, right. Right. and those areas I, and I still think would, um, at that point, you know, would, would yes, be included in the operational point. area. Yeah. So that to enable the rest of the bush away. to get... Yeah. Okay, so you take, responsi you take the responsibility because you're doing this, all this digging work. We're helping to support so You're helping yeah. to support this. For what reason? For because what it's reason? it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do because, yeah. because, is this right, that our animals have been poisoned with 1080 that you've dropped into the bush, regardless whether they got in the bush, whether they didn't. Our animals have been poisoned with the 1080 that you decided that was okay to drop into our bush you gave us advice on that you said to her this is what we want to do we took your advice as intelligent people as people that are running this operation that our stock would be safe and look at it yes. it's not safe is it it's not been safe no, has it's it it's not for stock no thank you